What time am I showing right now on the screen? Is it 1010? Maybe 1008? Or it could be 1009. What's better than one watch? That's easy. Two watches. I got no space. I'm going to move one off to the side. And whoa, just look at that. I have no idea how I'm going to film this. I feel like I'm looking at the black abyss of space, but we're going to give it our best shot. So let's check it out. Introducing the all new Venezianico Redentori Ultra Black. And the name means redemption in Italian. As in, maybe this watch can single-handedly redeem your outfit. Because you're pretty much always going to look stylish with this on your wrist. It has a Muso black Japanese painted dial that absorbs 99.4% of light. So what does that mean? It means you're looking at pure darkness. And that darkness prevented me from filming some of my usual macros. So please forgive me, but I spent hours trying to film it and it was difficult. But there is no doubt that this is absolutely stunning with the black hole like appearance. And I got both the 36 and 40 mil versions for you guys to check out today. The case features a high polished dome bezel and it's got high polish on the top of the lugs. So we got some attention getting metal work, which complements that mysterious allure of the dial perfectly. But the sides take a different approach. They are subdued and completely brushed, while well-proportioned crown guards ensure the protection of that push-pull crown. The 36 millimeter has 50 meters of water resistance, while the 40 has 100 meters. And those numbers make a lot more sense when we inspect that case back. The 36 millimeter model sports a snap on case back while the 40 mil version has a screw on case back. So that's going to be stronger and more resistant. But in terms of design, both case backs showcase a captivating engraving portraying a satellite hovering above the earth. Now let's do those dimensions. I got 36 millimeters in diameter with a secret measurement of 31 millimeters. We got a thickness of 11.5 and no drill lugs and a lug to lug of 44.8 and the lug width is 18 millimeters. Let's look at the 40. I got 40 millimeters in diameter, secret measurement 34.5 millimeters and a thickness of 12.4 and a lug to lug of 48 even. The lug width is 20 millimeters. As someone who loves small watches, I really appreciate the 36 millimeter option, but I know most people will go for the 40. Which one are you leaning towards? Now, both watches come equipped with the same midnight royal black Italian leather. This strap measures three millimeters in thickness near the lugs and gradually tapers down, providing a sleek profile. The strap is too stiff for my tastes, but I'm pretty sure it will break in nicely. It has two keepers, one stationary, one movable, and a fantastic high polish buckle. And one standout feature of this watch, which we haven't yet touched upon, is that sapphire crystal. Its flat surface at the top is accentuated by a thick, rounded, protruding edge. And this edge, when you have it in some light, produces a captivating blue glow around the dial. And that's all thanks to the anti-reflective coating on the underside. This little detail elevates its overall appearance. And when it comes to the ultra black, appearance is king. If you're buying this type of watch, you are not concerned with accuracy because there are no indices and no chapter ring. So when you want to read the time, you're going to have to guess within a minute or two. Let's do a fun experiment. What time am I showing right now on the screen? Is it 1010? Maybe 1008? Or it could be 1009. You don't care because you only care about how good this thing looks. <laughs> and speaking of accuracy, taking a backseat here, the movement Venezianico chose is perfect. The Seiko NH35. 
It's officially rated minus 20 plus 40 seconds a day. It's got a low beat 21.6 VPH 24 joule hack hand wine automatic with 41 hours of power reserve. And as you can see here, it's well within its spec. And the NH35 does have some other advantages. It keeps the cost down while being cheap to replace or service. Now, something I forgot to mention is the handset. It's Dauphine and completely high polished. It looks beautiful. And that downward taper really helps catch some light. So you have a chance to read the time in the right angle. Now the big question, what's the price of this stylish Italian watch? Well, both sizes are the exact same price. They come in at 500 USD. And I believe Venezianico covers the duties for the United States, which is great, but the price is too high in my opinion because we don't have a bracelet and an unregulated movement. I would be more forgiving with a bracelet, but perhaps my assessment is off. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And if you're interested in watching more reviews like this one, simply click on one of the two videos on the right of your screen right now and I will meet you there.